Hey everyone, so in this video we're gonna make some sodium nitrite which is a very useful but also increasingly hard to get chemical and we're starting from this stuff here which is sodium nitrite so uh, yeah, let's get started So uh, what we're going to do here really is we're going to mix this sodium nitrite here with a uh, stoichiometric amount of starch. Really any starch does the job but um, then we'll heat it up and the starch will reduce the nitrite to nitrite which we can then hopefully purify out somehow. So uh, yeah, now looking at this like this stockpile of nitrate that I still have this is not even remotely enough for the kind of sky that I'm planning to do this on so uh, yeah gonna have to make some more of that first right I managed to dig up my old jar of ammonium nitrate it's just gonna react this with some sodium bicarbonate to get sodium nitrate again um, yeah, one quick thing I have to address here is that whenever I do something about ammonium nitrate, I just get loads of comments from weird people just asking things about explosives, like asking how to turn this into like Tannerite or some shit, which is, dude, that, uh, that's so wrong. <laughs> like, fuck off, Kules. What do you, what do you even expect from this channel? This is not about explosives. What do you expect? So we take uh, ammonium nitrate and we put sapphire to fix. Right, I've got my chemicals here. Got my specialized nitrate reactor. So let's get cooking. replenished so now how do we actually go about this task of reducing this to nitrite um, there are several ways of doing it really um, one very commonly found but also equally weird way of doing it is using lead lead metal where you just add some lead to molten sodium nitrate and gets oxidized to lead oxide makes nitrite but the problem with this is that you have a lot of lead a lot of toxic shit to deal with so it's not ideal another method people use is to use just charcoal just an elemental carbon which of course has the same effect as lead um, the problem is it releases so much energy and gets so hot that you start to decompose some of the freshly formed nitrite again that reduces the yield and shit and it's it's not too good really um, there is another way that involves adding sulfur to a melt of sodium hydroxide and nitrate um, I think wait who did that, that I think science thing did it by the way science thing cool channel um, anyways um, basically you produce like sulfur dioxide and a bunch of sulfate now the way I'm going to do it is using starch, in my case potato starch, but really any starch, right? come on, starch is all the same. Um, pretty much we just add a stoichiometric amount of starch to this and mix it up real well and then heat it until it ignites and then extract our nitrite from the resulting melt, I guess. Um, I've already done it on like a smaller scale, like 10 gram scale. 
and that worked well so we're gonna scale it up to a full 100 gram scale so 100 grams of sodium nitrate and however much starch it takes Alright, that reaction was actually a lot more uh, manageable than I thought it would be. Like it only, it took like two and a half minutes or something, which is a lot longer than anticipated. But anyways, uh, this is the product we got. Um, yeah, now next I'm going to dissolve this up in, in some water and then filter out any solids because there's probably some solid chunks still floating around in there and then we'll boil down the solution to kind of concentrate it until something precipitates I guess Alright, so at this point there should be mostly nitrite, but also some remaining nitrate and apparently also some basic stuff in there. Because, well, during the heating step when the reaction got very hot, um, some of the nitrite decomposed to like sodium oxide and made sodium carbonate and something. So I'm just gonna go ahead and add a small amount of nitric acid just to kind of neutralize that a little. Just bring down the pH ever so slightly. Not enough to um, turn the nitrite into nitrogen oxides, but just to kind of destroy those basic things a little. Uh, just gonna add this in until I can smell a bit of nitrogen dioxide. Uh, should be going for a pH of around nine, I think. Right, so here we go. All 
Right, I can smell something. That's about nine and a half or something. So here's that product from evaporating that solution down. Um, I ground it up a little so it would look less um, yellow because it's a lot more yellow than nitrite should really be. Um, so now how can we be sure this is actually a good product? Uh, well for one it reacts with acids to give copious amounts of NO2 fumes like these brown nitrogen dioxide fumes. Now that's already a pretty good indication we have a lot of nitrite, nitrite I mean, um, there, but it would really be good if we knew uh, purity of our product and we can do some testing but video would get too long and it's already taken me too long to make this. Um, yeah right, I can already tell you some results though. The product from this run is about 50% pure, yields about 20%, um, though those are not very accurate numbers. Um, yeah, however, if you use 25 grams of starch instead of 17 grams in the reaction, yields will be as high as 30%. So uh, yeah, that's, that's definitely a lot better, so I recommend you do that. But yeah, that's basically it for this part one video, so uh, yeah, till the next time, whenever that may be, and bye.